Over the course of three days, the armed forces of Ukraine inflicted devastating blows on two Buk M3 air defense systems and a radar station, according to Defense Express. During October the 23rd to the 25th, Ukrainian defense forces reduced Russian air defense by two Buk M3s and one more radar, which appears to be a record number for such a time since the start of the full-scale invasion, especially if you take into account what exactly this was done by drones and the apparently new tactics of their use. In particular, on October the 23rd, Ukrainian UAV operators of the Unmanned Systems Forces conducted a successful operation to detect and destroy the first installation of the latest modernization of the Russian BUK. And on the night of October the 25th, another BUK M3 complex was detected and eliminated by Ukrainian UAVs. And together with it, the Buk M2 Target Illumination and Guidance Radar Station 9C36 Air Defense System Buk M2 was included in the destruction kit. The complexes were located in the temporarily occupied Luhansk region, literally several dozen kilometers from the front line, as reported by the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. It should be noted that the Ukrainian drone attack tactic has proven to be excellent value for money. Imagine a Ukrainian multi-copter bomber approaching an enemy position and dropping $500 worth of munitions on the latest multi-million dollar Russian air defense system. Previously, the Ukrainian military mostly hunted these air defense complexes with the help of the HIMARS artillery system. But drone tactics have shown that the same effective results can be achieved with the help of cheaper means. The general staff emphasizes that operations to eliminate anti-aircraft systems of the Russian Federation will continue, which will open up the possibility of hitting enemy targets both on the line of combat and in the rear. The Buk M3 is a brand new Russian air defense system. It uses new missiles and has advanced electronic components. It has much improved capabilities compared with the older Buk systems. It outperforms even the old S-300P long-range air defense system. A single Buk M3 complex is capable of engaging up to 36 different targets simultaneously from any angle, while a single fire control radar is capable of supporting the engagement of up to six different targets simultaneously within a sector 120 degrees in azimuth and 85 degrees in elevation. In terms of organization, one Buk M3 brigade would be expected to consist of four different divisions with a single 9S52 Pollyanna D4 Brigade C2 or similar vehicle in control of all four divisions. One division is typically composed of three batteries with one command vehicle and one search radar vehicle responsible for three batteries. Each battery would consist of two launch vehicles. These launch vehicles can be either one 9A317M Tela and a 9A316M TEL or two 9A316M TELs and a single 9S36M illumination and guidance radar vehicle. The range of Ukrainian FPV drones has probably increased significantly. Russian occupiers have recorded their appearance more than 30 kilometers from the front line. A corresponding video was recently published by one of the Russian Z channels. The occupiers discovered an FPV drone with an extended flight range between the villages of Veliki Kopani and Tarasivka, which is in the occupied part of the Kherson region. This is more than 30 kilometers from the territories controlled by the defense forces of Ukraine. Here it is, the bird. So you can see, this is before reaching Kopani, from Tarasovka. They fly with things like this. And they fly there calmly, said the upset occupier. He showed such an intercepted drone. Judging by the footage, it is a UAV equipped with a projectile dropping system. Russian military observer Yen Matveyev commented on the situation on Telegram. He noted that this is not the first report from the Russian armed forces about Ukrainian FPV attack drones flying deep into the rear. 
We cannot rule out a sabotage and reconnaissance group looking into the rear. But in general, Russian channels have previously noted an increase in the flight range of Ukrainian FPVs. If they start flying stably at 30 kilometers or more, this will hit logistics harder than the explosion of the arsenal in Toropets, the expert said. It should be noted that both Ukraine and the Russian Federation often use FPV drones in war to destroy enemy manpower and equipment directly at the front line. These drones are quite compact and often have a short flight range, up to 10 to 15 kilometers, part of Kiev's strategy is targeting of military equipment, ammunition and infrastructure deep inside Russia, as well as making civilians feel some of the consequences of the war that is being fought largely inside Ukraine. So, Ukraine's long-range drone strike campaign has a number of goals. The most immediate objective is to undermine the Russian war machine by targeting military infrastructure and the country's economically vital energy industry. Strikes on Russian airfields have been credited with damaging a number of military planes used in the Kremlin's bombing campaign of Ukraine cities and civilian infrastructure. Meanwhile, Ukrainian officials believe the recent attack in Tver region destroyed significant quantities of Russian munitions including artillery shells and missiles. At this stage, Ukraine's bombing raids on Russian oil refineries remain on an insufficient scale to plunge the Kremlin's vast energy industry into crisis. However, Ukrainian drone attacks are frequently followed by media reports of decreased Russian refining capacity. Ну и вот что вы видели, это не доезжая до Капаней. Это за Капанями в сторону Тарасов. Ну, в сторону Тарасовки или от Тарасовки не да, доезжая да. до Капаней. Вот, в принципе, они вот с такими вот вещами летают и уже спокойно долетают. Russian military propagandist Maxim Kalashnikov reported that Russian soldiers who recorded an appeal with complaints about their command and claimed that they allegedly wanted to zero them were ultimately shot by their own commanders. Z Blogger published a message in which he reported details of what happened at the front. On October the 21st, information appeared that an assault unit of the 19th Tank Regiment of the Russian Armed Forces had taken up all-round defense and recorded a video message in which they accused their own command of intending to eliminate the entire combat group. According to them, the practice of execution has become widespread in the Russian army. This is how they deal with those who refuse to go on meat assaults. In the end, that's exactly what happened. Only one Russian soldier survived and he was thrown into the pit as punishment. The guys were put in a pit and only one survived. One of all those in the video. They were reset by order of the commander of the 67th Division of 25A. One of the Russian Z bloggers is indignant. Recall Russian commanders are said to be sending troops on deadly meat grinder assaults in Ukraine as punishment for showing dissent. The tactic is being used to silence personnel who become disgruntled and means almost certain and very rapid death, according to a media outlet which has been using open sources to monitor the Kremlin's losses. More than 71,000 Russian military personnel have died in the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, according to analysis by Mediozana, BBC News Russian Service and volunteers. As the combined research uses a process of verification, the real toll is likely to be much higher. Prisoners were the largest category of war losses by March 2023, before the numbers dropped after Russian forces captured Bakhmut. By September 2024, volunteers once again emerged as the largest category among the killed in action. The researchers attributed this to waning prison recruitment and no new mobilization at that point. UK military intelligence claims September was the deadliest month for the Russian army since the start of the war in Ukraine. But crucially for Moscow, the massive casualties have neither provoked significant public discontent within Russian society nor discouraged potential new recruits. According to Western assessments, Russian casualties in the war so far tally up to 115,000 killed and 500,000 wounded.